Okay. Channel Gila. Okay. Sirke. Not here. Ariel. Yes. Karen. Not here. Daniel. Malka Levana Butler. Think she's here? Okay. So Karen, Karen is not here, right? Josephine Tamara. Not here. I'm talking about not here today in the place, right? Bracha Simcha. Coming. Sarah Kornblatt. Right? She's here. She's here. Hannah. Is it here? Kov. Kovtunenko, yeah. yeah, he's here. Mm -hmm. Hava Kirimko, no, no. <laughs> Chaya Menashe, she's here. Yeah, Sarah Vigail Baum. When you okay, Sarah Abigail is not here. You said right. She's not coming. Okay, Tavarezo. She's here. Everyone that is uh, coming after I started, please just let me know. Okay. How could you let me know by saying your name? Hello. Chaya Menashe? Yes, Chaya Okay, just called you. Okay. Just called you also, remember? Gila, you said, right? Yeah. <laughs> I remember that I called you. Okay. Sara Mora. Okay. Tova Razel. Hi, Tova Razel. I wasn't here for a long time and I'm very happy to be here and back. So I'm saying it to everyone. <laughs> Rachel O'Connell. Hi, Rachel. Shayna Bartuno, I'm sorry. What is she? Not here? She's not here or not here in the class? Just if she's not here at all, tell me, okay? Leia Rappaport. Smetana. Roman <laughs> Samantha, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is Samantha not here? You don't know. Okay. Sharonel. Yes. Sarah Saitkin. Um, yeah, she's here. She's working. Okay. Tehila White. She's here, but she's not here. Right now. Okay. Safa Geula, Safa Geula, Shayna Greenstein, not here. Nadia Gold, Shalom Aleichem, 
and Toby Spielman. Hi, Toby. Okay, so you know which month we are now? Adal. Bet. Second Adal. Yes. What do you ask me? You are on the list. I wrote you down. Oh, yes. It's Chaya Menashe, right? No? Oh, I'm sorry. Rivka. Rivka Ginston, he said? No, Ben Vietka. Okay. Could you find her name here? I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Problem not in the list. No, you have to tell me. I'm sorry about this. No, that's okay. Okay. At least I feel better. You are from Ukraine? Yeah. Wow. So you don't have to run away. Wishing you everything good. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> so we are learning Phila, and Phila is very important because even though that we said already everything before, we said it yesterday. So why are we saying again? But that's how things are in life. If you have somebody, a very close friend, really close friend that you think about uh, the whole entire time, but if you will stop to think about her and you will stop to talk to her, after a while, something will miss. It's, it will become less the strong feeling of connection, not immediately. Everything has to be renewed constantly in life, even in physical life. If you wanna be part of it, you have to be constantly with it. This is even, thank you so much. This is even if it's a physical thing, somebody, hello. Yeah, right down, just right down. When you came here, I don't want to mark it down, let you not fear. Oh, thank you. Okay, everyone becomes later. Even in a physical life that we could see something, if we are stopping the connection with this thing, we're becoming less involved. It's becoming a distance. When we're talking about Hashem that we don't see with our life. So it's not important that we remember that Hashem is everything for us. Because when we're stopping to talk about it, when we're stopping to think about it, it's becoming less a part of us. This is what tefillah is. Tefillah means that we are constantly, every day, even a few times a day, we are constantly remember that everything that we have is from Hashem. And everything, everything that we have is not only Hashem is giving us, but Hashem is giving us with love. He really cares for us. And we have constantly to nourish this idea, to remake it, again and again to be part of us. You know something? If you have a friend which is very close to you and you're talking to her even, let's say you really love her, but for some reason you are very busy with all kinds of things, so you don't have much time to talk. You talk about her, you talk to her, but just quickly, hi, it's going on every two days, every week, it's becoming less 
part of you. If you want things to be real, you have constantly to build up. This is with everything. Even in family life, between a husband and a wife, even though that they love each other in a very strong way, but you have to build it up constantly. You have how you build it up to expression, to showing it, to there are so many ways how to show it from buying flowers to everything. It's important. It's important to express your feelings and to build up everything that is important to you. Since Hashem is really important for us because our life completely depends on Hashem, not only that we are alive, the quality of life. How are we feeling? We're feeling happy, relaxed, we are healthy. You cannot take anything for granted, nothing. Person could be very healthy, not even realizing how much Hashem is doing for your health so much, God forbid. It's not the worst, but it's bad. If somebody is starting to feel pain in the teeth, it's not the end of the life, but it's bad, right? When are you starting to realize that you have a healthy tooth on what's doing for you? When it helps you, when, you, when everything is okay, you're not even realizing it. But Hashem is realizing it. Hashem is making it to be healthy and you should enjoy your life. Hashem takes care of everything that we don't think even about. Them. So these are important things. And that is davening. That is tefillah. Tefillah means we are talking about it. We are telling Hashem, we are thinking about what Hashem is doing for us. We are thinking about that without Hashem, we are nothing. Not only in health, in wisdom, Sometimes a person is very, very smart, very wise, but not happy. There are some people that are very wealthy. Some, pe some people think they have money, they have everything. It's not true. There are people that are having so much money and their life is a big mess. They don't have peace of mind. They don't have so many things that are so important to them. So we have to know, yes, it is very important to have a lot of money, but only if we are happy, if we are using it in the way that gives us satisfaction. So this is what Hashem is doing for us. Hashem is building us up and it's important for us to realize it. Now I will tell you something else. Sometimes people that don't they don't know even <laughs> what is important for them. Sometimes there are people that are convinced <laughs> that something has to happen for them and they have to have it. And they are not realizing that this is really not the, the right thing for them. Why? Because they don't see the whole entire picture. Only Hashem is giving us the rules that are really good for us. Why? Because Hashem is so, he's seeing the whole entire picture and he wants us to really feel good. And that is what Fila is, to realize that. You know the word, what is, what is the meaning of the word Fila? Could somebody tell me? Translate the word Fila. Just translate. What do you say? Is it judge? Uh, the other one? No. Praise, somebody said? No. These are things that are coming okay. together with Phila, but Phila does not mean praise. What is Phila? Is it bond, like spelling? Bond. Yes. Amazing. Did you write your name here? Oh, it was late. I was putting up the lunch. I only ask if you're right because I don't want them to think that you cut close. Okay, just make a check. 
tefillah means two things. One thing tefillah means prayer. What is prayer? We asking Hashem to give us what we need. And one translation of tefillah means bound, connected. In Hebrew, a tofel. Tofel means you're putting, you're bounding. So both are coming together. You pray, and if you pray in the right way, not you just saying the words, then you are being bound with Hashem. And if you are bound with Hashem, you know what happens to you? You have peace of mind. You are happy. There are some people in this class that are always laughing, even when they sleep, according to the way that I see them behaving here, they're always having an internal happiness. That's a very good thing. But every person is having the strength that Hashem is giving us to feel like this. How? By remembering who Hashem is. And that's what prayer is. If we are praying in the right way, it means that we are realizing what is really important for us. <clears throat> I don't know if you know, but about 100 years ago, <coughs> in Russia, I don't mean Russia and not Ukraine, we're not talking about this, because I want you to know that both countries, many great people live, but then it was the Rabbi Rashab, he demanded from students in the yeshiva, that they, not everyone, they did not allow that to everyone, but a group of people that they they were um, extra wise. So he demanded them that their prayer should be four or five or more hours. But I cannot just say something without explaining it. And I'm, I'm not going to explain all the whole thing, but just the idea, what does it mean after they learn and we do it today also. We, I mean, every one of us here. After the learning about the purpose of a person in this world and about how could we reach the purpose and about what the qualities that Hashem is putting in us, how to use them in the right way, then you could concentrate in them. You know what concentrate means? Concentrate means that you're thinking only about one thing. When I am asking you to review an idea, the, na the natural action of a person is that when you have, I'm asking you, review what we learn about in 20 minutes. Review it in your mind. So when you will think about it, together with this reviewing, you will have also 20 other things that are in your mind, right? That's a human nature. You don't think about one thing. You think about many things together. But the real way, if a person is thinking about one thing only, it's becoming so much a part of you. If you think about it, you have to learn how to do it. So these special groups of students that were very talented, he taught them and he demanded from them that when they are davening, praying, they should think only about this idea of what it said in praying. And you're becoming so much involved with that, like you are, you don't know what's going on around you. You are becoming so involved with what Hashem is doing for you that it's becoming a part of you. You, you really love Hashem. This is only for special people, but I want you to understand the idea that each one of us, when we're saying the word and we're thinking about the words that we're saying, we are really becoming very involved, very, we fell in love with Hashem. You know what it means to fall in love with Hashem? Not only sometimes you can say, yeah, I love, I love this, she is so amazing, I love her, but, you also love pizza. You also love other things. It's not only this. But real love is, is that it's a different kind of a love. So this is the purpose of davening. Now, after this long introduction, we could 
see a little bit. Hi, how are you? Hi. Good to see you. Good. You want to give it to her? I came to a conclusion. It's better that everyone should feel it. So take safe time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So keep it by you, if you don't mind. <laughs> and at the end of the class, give it to me, okay? Okay. So we are now, I wasn't here for a long time, unfortunately, on Baruch Hashem here. So we are now in Ashrei. Do you have Silurim? You have, but my, you have Silurim here? Probably not, right, Sarah? No. You have? <laughs> Please, please it's, a, it's a request to remember to bring a sidur because it's really important. So do you know where Ashley is? No, that's not such a good idea. Sarah, you want to give it back to me? I'm sorry. Because like this, I won't know your name at all. <laughs> Ariel, at the end, you got me a sidu. Oh. No, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> no, what? Don't give me yours, no. No, 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 here, I'll grab from the other So if you don't have, please next time, please have, try to join with somebody else. Okay. So one of the prayers that we are saying three times a day, Chaya. Chaya Menashe is here? Yeah. Just to say hello, that's it. Okay. Samantha. Oh, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Ariel. Safa Geula. Okay. So one of the players here is in page 31. Yeah is Ashrei. I took it back, I'm sorry, because I want to recognize the names, okay? Ashrei, how many times a day we are saying Ashrei? Three. Three, very good. Then, when are we saying it? Twice in Shacharit. Twice in Shacharit, that's right, and one, and one in Mincha. It is a very important prayer so far that it said that people that are saying Ashrei three times a day are having guaranteed for Olam Haba which is very powerful, right? Why is Ashrei so important? Because this is one of the Prakim that is connecting us with love to Hashem. So if we know what it means, it helps us. Right before Ashrei, the conclusion right before Ashrei in davening, in prayer is, Vehu Rachum Yechaper Avon. Somebody knows what it means? Vehu. What is Vehu? And he, Vehu, referring to Hashem, Rachum. What's Rachum? Merciful, right? And what does it mean, merciful? Yechaper 
Avon. What's Avon? Avon means a scene. What kind of a scene? Any type of a scene. Sometimes a person is making a scene on purpose, but sometimes a person is making a scene purposely. Well, but you're saying it has from Mars, right? What do you say? This is from Mars, right? Mars also, yes, because this is. Everything in, like I told you before, everything in prayer, if you're paying attention to that, it really makes us feel very good. It makes us feel, you know, most of the people, I think, most of the people in life are having guilt feeling about something at least. I could be better, I could do better, I don't deserve, and etc. and etc. And this itself is also a sin. Because <clears throat> guilt is good only if it makes us feel that we have to do something. That's why Hashem creates guilt. Not to feel guilty, to feel that I have to improve, I have to, to correct, I have to become better. But guilt, just for the purpose of guilt to put us down, this is exactly the wrong thing to do. So Avon, a sin, there are many levels of a sin. There is on purpose, there is by accident. And in purpose, there is also few types. Sometimes a person is doing in purpose because she likes, she likes this food, even though it's not allowed to eat. But she likes it, not because she wants to make Hashem upset. Sometimes there are people that are making a sin because they want to make Hashem upset. There are so many levels in how to make a sin. But the whole idea is that Hashem is merciful and he is forgiving. What is he forgiving? Any type of a sin, even on purpose, as long that you really want to correct yourself. Person should not say Hashem is forgiving me, so I will continue to do wrong things. That's of course not. But if person that wants to achieve, Hashem is telling us, I created you only for having good, for being connected to me. This will make you perfect. So don't feel guilty in a way that you give up. No, Hashem said no. Vehu rachum. Like you said, we're saying it also in Ma'ariv. We're saying it a few times. Even in Shacharit, we're saying it a few times. This is an important thing to remember. Vehu rachum. Hashem is mercy. Yechaper avon. He is forgiving any type of a sin. He does not want us to wrap ourselves in guilty and in giving up because this is exactly the wrong thing to do. And this is a very important thing. That's why one of the biggest and most important thing that the Rabbi is writing it to people, all type of people, you know, to the Rabbi, everyone, everyone, you know what, everyone? No, you don't know. Everyone means people that you think that they have no connection to anything good, but they wrote to him because they knew that he understands because Hashem is explaining, Hashem is telling him to give the message to us that everyone is welcome. So one of the things that the Rabbi is emphasizing to so many people is giving them directions how to become more successful and how to become achieving. And even people that they have such heavy loads for really bad things that they did and they think that there's no hope. And the Rabbi is telling them no, not only that there is hope, the whole world is open for you, but remember to do it. And this is the whole Torah and the whole Hasidut. Remember to do it with simcha, with happiness. And happiness, the Rabbi is adding one word to simcha, with two levav, it's a two word. Not only sometimes a person is happy, you force yourself to be happy, but inside you don't feel good. Two levav means that you have to make the happiness in such a way 
that this is an eternal happiness, that you feel peace of mind. How could I feel peace of mind? What do you, how could you know, ask me to do such a thing? Because Hashem said that if you do your part, he will fulfill everything that is missing for you. He will make you to, to reach the highest in the way that you cannot even imagine. So this is a special thing. And, and especially now that we are in the month of Adar, which Adar is a special thing in this month that even though that the whole entire year we must be happy in the month of Adar, we have to increase the happiness. And we have to know that even if we are not in the mood to be happy, it's not an easy thing to be happy. Happy does not mean going wild and then and, and turn over the whole entire world. That's not happiness. This is this is the wrong thing. Happiness means to act in a happy way. So when we're acting in a happy way, we're doing our part, even if we are not in the mood, Hashem is telling us He will bring us to this situation and we don't have to be afraid of anything. So the last phrase before we starting Ashray. We are saying that which means that not only that he is forgiving, sometimes somebody did something wrong to you and she's regretting that she's coming to you. You're forgiving me? You said you are forgiving, yeah. But uh, you don't feel it really internal because the person really did a bad thing to you. But by Hashem, there are no such thing. Could you imagine somebody is doing something wrong to you and then the person is asking you, are you forgiving me? And you are forgiving. But the next day, she's doing it again. Are you forgiving me? Yes. Third day, again. After 10 days, you are not going to forgive her. Why? Because we are human. There's a limit to our patience. But Hashem, there's no limit. That's what it means. We hear Baal HaShiva for. He is no limit with his forgiveness. And you know something al Rabbi is saying in Tanya? Every time when we are praying, there is a special prayer to Hashem. Hashem, our Father, forgive us. We sin. And then we're saying, we're concluding the, this request. Baruch Ata Hashem. Blessed are you, Hashem. Chanun the merciful that you are forgiving us with no end. And then a few hours later, again, we are praying, Shmona Yisra, and again, we are saying, Hashem, please forgive us three times a day. And the Alter Rabbi is saying in Tanya that this is true because we are saying, Baruch Atah Hashem, we're saying Hashem's name. We're not allowed to say Hashem's name if it's not real. So if he's saying Hashem's name, this itself showing us that Hashem is never ending to forgive us. And this is literally. So if you're thinking about it, it's like I told you before, what is davening? We have to imagine these things. We have to imagine, not just imagine, but leave it, that Hashem is really forgive us, even though that we did it just an hour before, or even a minute before, we have to remember that we have a new, completely new option. We should not tell ourselves, no, Hashem is really not. No, Hashem is forgiving us. And this is the introduction before we saying Hashem. But it's a very important thing to know. If somebody will think, Hashem is forgiving us, okay. It's okay, I will sin again. I won't be so careful. You know, if somebody is making a sin and a mistake, it's also wrong. It's not so bad like somebody is doing purposely. Could you imagine that right here there is big fire and somebody is putting the finger for a second, it's bad enough. And I say, oh, what? I didn't realize it's fire. You don't think this thing will happen, right? A healthy person in the mind will never happen that you will put, when you see a big fire and you will put your finger in the fire. Why not? A person could make mistakes. But it's fire. You don't make mistakes with fire. So maybe, of course, you didn't went purposely to do it. 
but it doesn't happen. If you know something is very wrong, it's a fire, you won't do it even on a mistake. So if a person is making a sin on a mistake, it means that you, in some point in your mind, you didn't realize it's so bad to do it. So for this, you also need forgiveness. It's not like somebody is doing it purpose. But Hashem is forgiving, of course Hashem is forgiving that also. But the whole purpose is we should know why is Hashem forgiving? Because he wants us to be with him. Why does he want us to be with him? Why is, what is he gaining, gaining from that? He's not. He wants us for us. That's why he created us. Because he wants to share with us the unlimited, real good that we should have it. He created the whole entire world for us, not for him. He does not need it. But he wants us to have it. You know, sometimes somebody is coming to you and is telling you, you know what? Tomorrow you're getting hundred dollars cash. <coughs> you will be excited, right? You'll feel thankful and everything. Then another friend is coming to you and she's telling you, tomorrow she will give you not that, seriously, she's going to give you. $10,000. So how will you feel now to the $100 that the first person told you before? Before you was very excited about it, right? But now somebody is giving you $10,000, the $100 is losing a little bit the value, right? So we in this world, everything that we are imagining is so good and so amazing. This is only in our imagination. It's a, it's a true imagination. It's really good things that we have here in this world. But compare to what Hashem wants to give us, this is a joke. You know, sometimes you have an infant is playing in the crib, a piece of paper, something that for us as adults, it doesn't have any value. But if we will take away this piece of paper from, from the infant, it will be so upset. And to us, it means nothing. Why? Because the infant is limited in understanding in the way that we understand. You know that the angels are laughing at us when they see sometimes people are fighting one with the other about a nice house or all kind of things. And sometimes it's going to be such big fights and everything. The angels are laughing at us. What are we fighting for? We don't have an idea what really good is. But for us in this world, it looks, it's so good. We have to desire the good of this world. But we have to know that this is only a part of everything. So after we said that these things, Hashem is mercy and is forgiving. After that, we're saying one more pasuk. What is the next pasuk? Could I ask uh, somebody to read it, volunteer? And if not, I can read it. Okay, go ahead. Wait, after Hashem Hashem Beautiful. Could you explain it also? It was like I just lost my page. No problem, of course. Not bad. Good. It's saying that Hashem what is Hashem Hoshia? What is the word Hoshia? Hoshia is like, like safe. Safe. Hashem, after we're saying that Hashem is merciful and certain and forgiving, we're asking Hashem Hoshia. Okay, now we feel better. What we want, Hashem should help us to reach because we are human. We don't know the best that we could do. So we're asking Hashem, please Hashem, save us, help us. Since we know that you want to help us, help us to reach what you want us to reach. And what is the end of this pasuk? Which is Hamelech. What is Hamelech? The king, which is Hashem, of course. What is Yaneinu? <clears throat> we know that he will answer. He will accept our prayer beyond Koreinu, right away when we are calling him, which this is really reality. Again, I'm coming to the point that I said before, 
that when we are concentrating in the words that we say, it's getting a different understanding. When you're saying, Hashem Yanei, Yaneinu, Yom Koreinu, this is a reality, that when we're calling Hashem to save us, He will answer us. It's not like we're saying to some people, some people, they're coming, ask us something, okay, we'll take care of that, and, and right away we're forgetting about it. There are no such thing by Hashem. Hashem, Hamelech Yaneinu, Yom Koreinu. After that, we're saying the next parak of Ashrei. And like I said before, this parak we're saying three times a day, two times in the morning, right away in the beginning of the prayer. Then we're saying it after Shmona Ashrei, before Wallet Zion a second time. Then we're saying it the third time by Mincha. And I told you that this is very important parak to say. I want you to know also that when we do a mitzvah, even if we don't think about it. It is a very powerful thing. Could you imagine that now it's 12 o'clock at night and you enter this room and it's dark. Dark is dark. We don't need to explain what dark means. What you want to have light, right? But so you want, it's dark. And you're sitting like this five minutes and then I'm just calling a name because I want to know your names. Then, Tova uh, Reizum. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. So Tova Reizum is coming in and he's telling, uh, you're sitting five minutes in the dark room. Why are you sitting in the dark room? So he said, so what shall I do? It's that. So he's telling you, what do you mean what you should do? Um, <laughs> see the switch here? Pick up the switch. So she's telling you, you're not making sense. It's dark, the bulb is there. Why should I pick up the switch here? Today, you don't have to explain it because everyone knows that. But when there was no electricity, and it was a new thing, people would ask you this question. So you're telling her, the switch is here, but the switch is connected to the bulb. And when you pick up, it makes light here. So, Every mitzvah that we do is the switch to connect us with Hashem. Even if you do a mitzvah without thinking about it. If you pick up the switch, even if you don't think, you don't understand why it's making the light, it doesn't matter, but you pick it up, you do it, there is light. Every mitzvah, the word mitzvah means connection. Every mitzvah is connecting us to Hashem. Every mitzvah. Of course, there's a difference if you're doing it with more concentration, with more being involved with it, then you're getting feeling about it. Your connection is becoming stronger. But the main thing is to do it, even if you don't understand and you don't feel. A mitzvah connects you to Hashem. And when you are becoming connected to Hashem, it's completely a different thing. This is very important to know. So Ariel, from now on, if you're coming to the dark room, what are you going to do? Pick up the switch. Okay, okay, that's important for me. So, Ashrei Yoshvei Veitecha. What is Ashrei? Matoveret. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Nachon, Sat Yuter, Avon Nachon. Ashrei means how lucky, how lucky you are. This is a high level of expression in lucky. Who is lucky? Yoshvei Veitecha. The people that are sitting in your house. Who is your house referring to Hashem? And what does it mean, people that are seeding in your house? What does it mean, seeding? What's the difference between a person that is standing and seeding? What do you say? Yeah, go ahead. When you're standing, you're, you're like about to move, right? You're sitting here. Yeah. That's right. Standing is symbolizing more temporarily. You're standing, sitting is symbolizing you are more permanent. You're sitting, you're staying here. 
So sometimes it does not mean always, sometimes you could <clears throat> walk and you are considered that you're seeding. What does it mean? If something is very important to you and you're not stopping to think about it, it's not make a difference if you are seeding or you're walking. Even when you're walking, you are so involved with that, that, that you are in that. You don't know sometimes it's going on around you even, right? So who is the lucky one? The one that are seeding in your house, in Hashem's house. What is Hashem's house? What is a house? A house is the main place of a person. You could be at Vaux, you could be any other places, but you know, this is not your place, your house. This is your place. This is the place where your essence is there. So what is Hashem's house? Hashem's house is that you are involved with everything that has to do with Hashem. And it is very important to know, some people feel, I cannot wait that I should finish this mitzvah, finish the davening, finish the class, finish, uh, I can't wait. These people, they feel that they have such a yoke, such a, they cannot take it, they wait, they want to wait it. They want to leave it. But sometimes when you do something that you really love, it, even if it's hard, sometimes there's something that you really love and it's already 10 hours you are involved with that. But you don't feel tired from that. Not only you don't feel tired, you don't want it to end. You like it. You love it. If somebody is telling you, pick up, see this packet book, I don't mean yours, but see this packet book, pick up, it's yours. But I, I'm warning you, it weighs 100 pounds. So you don't want to pick it up 100 pounds. But then the person is telling you, you know what's inside? The most precious diamonds in the world. Oh, then you forget it's 100 pounds. It's 100 pounds. But it, it's not, you don't feel it's 100 pounds because you want it. I don't know, maybe some people here don't. Diamonds doesn't mean something to them. But something that you really like. Okay, so your shvei means that your mind, you are sitting there, you are permanent. There. How lucky are the people that are sitting involved with you, your shvei veitecha. And then the pasuk is continuing, od yehalalucha sela. What does it mean, od? even though that they are already so involved with you, they are not satisfied. They want more, they want more. Like when, very simple, when you want something, even if you got so much, so much, but you are not satisfied, you want more because it's so important to you. So on Yehalelucha, they will praise you. Why will they praise you? because they feel that through praising you, they understand you even more and you could, they could get more from you. You know, sometimes you have somebody that, uh, you have a job, let's say, but in a place and the job is okay. You're not very happy with the type of a job, of this job, it's, it's not your personality. Oh, you're not so happy with the payment that you're getting there. So you do it because it's a job. You have to. You you have to. You have to do it. But sometimes you have a job that you enjoy it. You enjoy every second of this. Of it talks to you. This is what you are, and also they paying you a lot. So you're not waiting to finish it, to run out. You, you enjoy it. You want to be more and more. And even when you have to, it's over. Time is over. You don't want, you don't want to leave. You have to leave, but you don't have to leave. This is odd. These people that are so surrounded with loving Hashem, which means, okay, so if, if, if you are in the first job, somebody is talking to you about it after that, about the job, and about the owner of the job. 
It doesn't mean so much to you. You are very uh, cold about it. But if it's something that the, the owner, the one that gives you the job is a person that you're so proud of this person, gives you such a good feeling that you work by such a great person, gives you security and a good feeling. So you love to talk good about this person. Why? Because as greater the person is, it makes you feel better. So when we are praising Hashem, that he is so powerful and he is so righteous and he is so kind and he is unlimited with everything, it makes us to feel so lucky to have a connection with such a person that is giving us all of these things. That, that, that means all ye hallelujah, they feel even more praise you because it gives, it gives them a good feeling that they have such a person. And the as much that they will praise, they won't be satisfied. They will like to praise more and more because that builds them up more. And that's what Selah means. Selah means forever. They will praise you even more forever. And this is, if a person is like this, God forbid, there are very hard situations. And we, today we don't need to look far what's going on in the world. But if we know that we have Hashem around us, it's a different feeling that we are having. The whole entire ashray is built according to all the ladders. All the ladders, you know, that ashray goes according to all the ladders. Every pasuk in ashray goes from Aleph, Bey, Gimel, Dalad. You could see it. You don't have to believe me. Our Mimcha. In the beginning, it said, this is an introduction, how lucky we are. Then it said, who wrote this parak, David the Miller. Then it's starting, Aromimcha Hashem ki, Aromimcha is Aleph. Then, Bechol Yom Avorcha Kadet, Gadol Hashem Gimel, Dor Ledor, the whole entire Aleph Bet in order. And the reason is because Aleph Bet is symbolizing every possibility in the world. We, when we are praising Hashem, we are saying that Hashem is being praised in any way, in any possible way, even things that we cannot even imagine. He is being praised. And it's not like we are praising somebody that we don't care. Our Hashem. That means me. There is one exception only, Nun. There is no letter nun, a pasuk with nun. You could see after malchut cha, malchut kol alamim. What is the next pasuk? Somei Hashem. There is no nun. Malchut cha is mem, and then is samach. There is no nun. You see that? And the reason is, everything is very exact. The reason is because nun is symbolizing failure. No fail. Nofel means somebody that is falling, is not having the strength. And David Amalek did not want to put such a thing. When we have Hashem, there is no such thing. There is no failure. Hashem is protecting us that there is no failure. But he didn't want to miss the moon. So you could see that the next pasuk is Samach. How is it saying? So may Hashem lechol hanoflim. What does it mean? Hashem is supporting. If there is somebody that is in this category of nofel, Hashem is supporting. But he's not saying it. It's an incident for itself. Okay, let's see with Mashiach. Okay. We are lucky that we have the mitzvot and the prayers and everything. Yeah, somebody wants to ask a question? Okay. No questions. We have a shame no questions. Okay. Bye. Thank you. I feel so bad about that. We still don't know everyone's name. But we learn not to feel bad, right? Okay. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, how is Mr. Sata? 
Baruch Hashem, she's good, Vilana, everything is good. Unfortunately, she fell two weeks ago very badly, and she hurt herself very badly, but she will be good in Yetz Hashem. Okay. Good. Did you go to the reunion? What do you say? Did you go to the reunion? The family reunion? Yeah, we went. How was it? It was amazing. I didn't know about it. I was at your house. <laughs> Good. We are looking for all of you. Yes, Hashem. Hope my wife will feel strong and good. Everyone is invited. Okay. Okay. Put it here. <laughs> I remember. Remember. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that you came. You remember? Yeah. <laughs> I was there two times. Yeah. 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 Okay. Don't forget your hands. Yeah. I don't know. Can I ask you something? Yeah. About Hashem for giving us yeah. all the time yeah. and individually. Yeah. yeah. And talking about our people, like yeah. what's going on in the world right yeah. now. Yeah. We are hearing that uh, we need to forgive us more and more. Right. And that's why right. things right. are still happening. Yeah. That, uh, we can see the, the happenings of Okay, this needs more explanation, but sometimes it takes time until we see what the forgiveness happens right away. And it has to be studied to explain why sometimes we don't see things. But it's being explained also in the city. But this is 100% of the is forgiving in every day. So it has to be studied more in Hasidu and other things. Yeah, but the reality is that he is in the way. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.